Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make It Loco channel. Uh, today we're working on a Ford Econoline van uh, and it has an issue with the blower motor up front here uh, not working on speeds one, two, and three, but max high four uh, works just fine, okay? Um, so the usual, not any uh, vehicle out there is the blower motor resistor. Those fail all the time. Once they do, they default and they pass through to high. It's like a fail safe, okay? Uh, so a lot of you out there probably are gonna go ahead and change that first and then you still have the same problem and now you're watching this video. So today we're gonna go inside the cab here. I'm gonna show you what actually fails on the Econoline vans. This is unique to the Econoline vans for many years, I would say since 2000 or maybe even maybe the 90s, uh, up until 2014 when they stopped making them, okay? Uh, we're gonna go inside here and show you what actually fails to cause this issue. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, so here is the blower motor resistor that you guys have already, probably already changed because uh, it's the most common and easiest thing to change out. On the Econoline vehicles, uh, it's not under the dash. It's actually by the battery right here. It's behind it and below. You can, yeah, you can see it down in there, right there. That's where it's at in here, so you got the little battery out and get to it. Once you pull the battery, it's really easy though. So these are what everybody always changes out on just about any vehicle. Uh, it's a resistor pack, drops the voltage as it goes through the resistors on here. Uh, and then you get your varying speeds on here. Now on the Econo lines, it's a little bit different. They have the old style switches, old style mechanical switches, vacuum switches. And over here, and all the amperage actually goes through the switch on there, uh, whereas any of the other newer Fords, it, they use an electronic manual temp control system, which is all smaller wires and is ground based for switching externally. Uh, but all the amperage is actually running through the switches on here. So what happens on these is the, like I said, low, uh, medium low, and medium high that do not work, as you can see. But then you flick it to high, everything works. So you know the blower motor is just fine, okay? But none of these other speeds work. So what happens on these is they start to burn up and melt because all the amperage is constantly running through there and the contacts eventually get worn. Once they get worn, uh, you know, they start having resistance inside of here and then of course resistance uh, equals heat. So it's gonna start to melt down. So you may notice on yours, you get up there and you, you sniff it and you kind of smell like burning electronic smell. This one also I noticed on here, I can barely even get it down to the low setting on there uh, because it's so melted and jacked up inside of there. It basically works here and then of course here. So the hardest part about these switches is that when they melt, uh, they usually take out the connector too. The connector on here will melt and you need to replace the pigtail. So uh, here's a resistor like I was talking about earlier, okay? that goes outside, which you probably already changed. Here's the mechanical switch that goes right here, and it's kind of turn locks into there, and one screw that holds it in. Here's the big old blade terminals on here, okay, that's what actually melts, and I'll show you on this one. And then here's the pigtail, uh, which also, of course, from the heat, gets melted, so you need to change that out too on there. This one's not too bad, but I'm gonna fix it and fix it right for this customer, uh, because it is a customer vehicle. I don't wanna have any issues going on the road. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pop this off of here. Let's check this one out. Now, most of the time, uh, the connector on here is gonna be melted and distorted. So you may need two hands to actually pry it up and off of here, lift the locking tab here out, and then wiggling it off of here uh, because it is all melted and distorted on there. So we'll go ahead and pull this one off, let you guys see. It's pretty obvious once you disconnect it, it's all melted, distorted, and jacked up on there, and it definitely needs to be replaced. The other thing you may notice because this, these wires are heating up through this whole process of failure on here, is that the insulation jacket's gonna be really hard on here, so the wire's gonna be really hard uh, to bend on here, and the, the insulation jacket gets stiff from all the heat over time. Now looking at the back side of the connector itself, you can see it's all burnt up and bubbled on there. I mean, you can see it right there. It's obviously all jacked up. So the other unique part about this is that you may see this video, you have this concern where one, two, and three don't work, but four does. You come over here and you look at it. It's pretty obvious. You change the pigtail and the switch and you still have the same problem. Well, the reason being is again, unique to this. Once this switch fails on here, 
there's still amperage going through your blower motor resistor, but it's not enough for your motor to spin and pull air through the plenum inside of there and keep this thing cool. This is bolted into the air box on purpose because it relies on that blower motor coming on while amperage is being drawn through here and cooling it so that the thermal limiter down here right there doesn't pop. So once you fix all this, you may find that you still need a blower motor resistor card like this uh, to fully fix it. That's why in this customer's vehicle, I went ahead and I just order all the parts and make sure we change it all because I know uh, how it goes on there. So if you are having this concern where one, two, and three does not work, very first, first and foremost, you wanna check the switch on here. It's unique uh, to these vehicles. And of course, make sure the pigtail's okay. Mine is not. And then in the end, you're probably gonna need the resistor on there. Uh, so that's about it. I just wanna let you guys know so you guys can fix your Ford yourself. See you next time, guys.